Okay, I'm working on the base of the Gothic cabinet. So, uh, Gothic, Celtic, whatever we're going to call it. Um, what I'm doing is I went to Menards and I looked for kind of some standard pieces that they sell so that I don't have to do a whole lot of milling. I use a 2x6 for the base, and since I have a 2 and a fourth inch drill bit, I can go ahead and put this decorative detail on it. Um, I'll show you how to cut that here on, on this one I'm working on. What I've done, I plotted out math mathematically where the center is and send the drill bit down into it. It won't go all the way through, so once I get this far, I take a drill, finish the hole on this side, flip it over, and cut the piece out. Okay, so I went through the holes that this is made with my drill. Now I have the center piece on this side. I'll put it in and start taking the pieces out. Good idea to clamp the work down because you'd hate to end up ruining your piece before you even get a chance to put it together. And there was a knot in that, and that's why it kicked. Okay, so kind of a nice little gothic uh, shape or Celtic, whatever you want to call it. What I did is I centered it on each on each piece. Now the pieces on the bottom of this. Um, what we're doing is, is uh, cutting it so that there's a, instead of just a 45, we're taking it 22 and a half so it has an octagonal feel. Again, this is the base cabinet. We'll glue all of these together, put our base board on, and then start to build up. Okay, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit in this project and show you where we're at now. Uh, we've got the... Uh, the stand here, there's a spindles I put on, and then a back piece with three uh, 1x12s, so that's what's going to give it the support. So what we're doing now is the decorative kind of trim on it. So we've got our medieval uh, or renaissance looking piece of furniture, we've got our picture that we're looking at to kind of give us an idea of scale. Um, when I first started in making this top portion, I was getting real into the whole, you know, let's let's do a raised panel, and so I think as you can see from this, I was cutting all of these, and I thought, you know, I don't think it's going to be as strong as I need it to be, so I did away with this, just went with the one buys, cut them at the 22 and a half uh, angle, put those on, screwed them to the top and there, so we've got a little bit sturdier thing. Now, what I'm going to do is all the decorative um, trim work on it will be glued and screwed so the more and more that goes on the stronger it'll get and then we'll put um, a door on this. Um, the other thing we're going to use our uh, trim router to do some uh, pseudo carving to kind of give it that medieval look too. So I'll try to keep the camera running and show you. Okay so what I'm doing now is I'm trimming out my basic box with a 1x2 and I got these little plugs that I think Actually, in woodworking, you're supposed to sand them flat, but I like the look of it sticking up. I think it kind of gives it that medieval flair that we're going for. So this is helping to support our top onto where our legs are. And like I say, every bit of trim that we're adding is just giving a little bit more and more support for uh, our cabinet. So what I'll do now <coughs> is start working on putting a decorative top on that will router out. We'll put the door on, and then we'll fool with... Uh, trying to get a good finish on the pine. I'm not ever crazy about how pine uh, stains. If we don't like it, we can always paint over it. I think I've probably got about $50 worth of wood. And again, this is pine, cheapest stuff that I can find, you know, to make the prototype. I didn't want to start in oak in case I didn't like it and it would be real expensive and real heavy. Uh, this is still really pretty lightweight. And so what I'll do is flip the camera back on once I get the top done. Okay, so we're still putting on trim pieces. What I did is I put this, what I call a skirt, right below it with the same gothic design uh, mimicking what's going on down below. 
What we got glued up here is a 2x6 that's going to set up on top and out a little bit so we can router an edge on it and make a, make a nice lid. But we're getting a whole lot closer now to a uh, finished product. Okay, so what I'm doing now is these are panels that are going to fit on uh, the outside of the thing. I've drawn on the gothic arches and I'm using a trim router to carve it out somewhat. Uh, let me go find the, where's the one I got done? Let me go get it. Okay, so you can see I put the gothic arches on, um, used my trim router and just carved it out a little bit. So, and then what I'll do is take it to the table saw, bevel the edges, and I'll just glue this on our cabinet to kind of give it that medieval look. Might even possibly use the drill press and put a few uh, holes like a church window would be in that to just give it more of a gothic, uh, gothic look to it. On the uh, parts where I have, where I have a definite uh, straight edge, I usually will use either the uh, um, the guide or I'll clamp a square on it because then it, if you have a long straight line it just looks better if it's totally straight than if you try to freehand it it tends to go a little bit. Also with this uh, you could use I built this out of plexiglass that the router sets in and there's holes every half inch and inch so I can get circle cuts so if you wanted to on your arches, you could get those perfect. They're so small, I've just been doing them by hand. Though. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I see. And then you see I can get a good straight line on my thing. Then what I'll do is go back with the thing, cut out the insides, and do my arches. Okay, so I got everything uh, routered out, and what I did was took it to the table saw and beveled the edge around it. So now I've got my gothic panel that I'll just be able to glue onto the, uh, the cabinet over here. So then we get like a raised, raised panel look. Okay, the... <clears throat> The pine I got from Menards is eh, crappy kind of wood. A lot of checks and twists, and uh, you know, it's not built, has not been making this building real square. So, for sure, we're going to paint. We're not going to stain. Um, I'm going with kind of a reddish uh, burnt sienna color. And what I'm doing now is I'm filling in any gaps where the wood's checked with a dark caulking uh, before we put the paint job on it. The. Uh, the cabinet itself is not super heavy because it's made out of pine. Uh, probably total in wood, I'd say about 60 bucks worth of stuff uh, that I had to buy. Uh, other pieces, you know, two by fours and stuff I had. The most expensive being seven dollars a piece for the it upside down, down and I've put on the first coat of what I call kind of a burnt sienna out of the red family. I just went to uh, Menards looked through the patches and found a color that I thought, but it does, that definitely has a reddish look to it. I'm not real sure that I'm going to put a second coat on it because the whole idea is we want to age it and make it look super old. So you can kind of see, I hope from the camera, it's blotchy as the one coat went on. The next thing I'll do is mix up a darker uh, watery liquid that I'll brush on and wipe right off to give it an antique effect and hopefully we'll have the camera running while I do that. But first thing I do, flip it upside down to get all the parts that would be hard to paint the other way. Then I'll flip it back up, finish the painting of the one coat, and then go in and start to darken it. Talking about a two-week period. Well, I bought things for her in November. Just a second. 
If you bought things for her in November and she wasn't working, how did you expect to get paid back? Because she just got a notice from her job saying that she was hired in November. Actually, it was actually October 31st of Halloween that they called me and said that they would like her to work because I was referencing her job. That they want her to start working, so I figured I knew she had this job that she can pay me back with money. After a while, she kept asking me to lend money to her. I started saying no, because I wasn't getting any money. Lending her money or giving her a credit card to use? The money that was lent her were the credit cards. Where I bought these out of my credit card for her. You she, bought them? Well, sh sh listen to me. You bought them or she bought them? If I were to look at the receipts from the purchases, whose signature would be on it? It was mine, but it was a loan. It was her saying she would pay me back. She wanted all these things, but she was going to pay me back as soon as she got her paycheck. So you didn't give her a credit card. No. You purchased things on your credit card for her. Yes, as a personal loan. Just as, well, that's what you're saying. That's something that I have to decide. I have my sister right here. She was a witness, as it. Yeah, below me. Every single time oh, that's cool. I was with her, she heard everything of me asking yes. her for the money back. I can imagine you asking her for the money back. Now, I want to see when the first purchase was made on the credit card. I have it right here. Let me see. Yeah, I have it right here. What you're showing me, you're showing me a Best Buy card. I have the receipt. Show also, you are. You're showing me a Best Buy card for interactive software, digital communicado patch opening. I don't know what that is. It was all included in the speakers and the radio that I bought. Her. I have the receipts right here. Best Buy reward. Round. I don't know what this is. That's an extra card. There you can see we've really aged it up now. Okay, we got the Gothic cabinet finished, painted, got the hardware on it, the door with the uh, trefoil carved into it, so now it's ready to go set in the office.